All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday. You know what that means. Time to do the Tao now. Reading from Dr. Wayne W. Dyer's Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, Living the Wisdom of the Tao. And today we're on the 35th verse of the Tao Te Ching. Interestingly titled by Wayne Dyer, his chapter here, Living Beyond Worldly Pleasures. Easy for me to say. But I'm interested to see where Wayne Dyer goes with this because sometimes the title makes me think something different than the direction he actually takes it. So before I ramble on anymore, let's dive right into the 35th verse of the Tao Te Ching. All men will come to him who keeps to the one. They flock to him and receive no harm. For in him, they find peace, security, and happiness. Music and dining are passing pleasures, yet they cause people to stop. How bland and inspired are the things of this world when one compares them to the Tao. When you look for it, there is nothing to see. When you listen for it, there is nothing to hear. When you use it, it cannot be exhausted. Fascinating. I like how it's talking about the universal, but yet unnameable, untouchable, indescribable nature of the Tao itself there. When you look for it, nothing to see, listen for it, nothing to hear. But then the you know universal, inexhaustible nature, when you use it, it cannot be exhausted. Interesting, compared to what Wayne Dyer titles his chapter on his extrapolation of this verse, Living Beyond Worldly Pleasures. So let's dive right in and see what Dr. Dyer thinks about this verse of the Tao Te Ching. <clears throat> Take a few moments before reading this chapter, Wayne Dyer begins and says, ask yourself the following questions. When I think of pleasure, what activities really come to mind? How do I distinguish between what I find enjoyable and what I don't? Generally, pleasure is described as something experienced by the senses and available here in the world of form. Perhaps your experience in it, a, perhaps your experience it in a sumptuous meal, <laughs> in your favorite music or on the golf course, but it's most certainly a welcome motivating force for you. Problems can occur, Wayne Dyer says. However, when such pursuits become the primary focus of life. In other words, an emphasis on worldly pleasures can quite easily create an imbalance in your system leading to upset and disease. Obscurity, eating disorders, drug and alcohol abuse, addictions of every description, and preoccupations with plastic surgery are just a few of the undesirable results. Most everything defined as pleasurable is temporary. So if you need more and more of it, then it has a grip on you. What you desire so strongly has become your jailer, trapping you into believing that it will bring you peace, security, or happiness, but it never does. And I love this topic, and he goes into it so often about how, you know, it's the, it's the things outside of us, the things outside of us that we depend on for the emotions or the, you know, the comfort or happiness that it is that we seek after in life. But like I always say, if we can find a way to make happiness the way, then all of these things outside of us that we're seeking for so much begin to become irrelevant because we've already got what we're searching for and we're bringing it to life from inside of us rather than seeking to find it. Because like he was just saying, as it goes away, outside of you, then you lose that happiness, that joy, whatever it is that you're gaining from these worldly pleasures. So Wayne Dyer continues, worldly pleasures only seduce you into becoming dependent on them, and they leave you always wanting more. It's a craving that can never be satisfied. You need another great meal in order to have that pleasure again, because it vanished almost immediately upon the completion of your dessert. <laughs> you need to keep the music playing because when it stops, your enjoyment stops too. 
And funny enough, that makes me think of podcasts. You got to just keep listening and listening because when, when it ends, it's just not enough. All addictions scream out this depressing message. You'll never, ever get enough of what you don't want. Fascinating. Contrast this bleak picture of pleasure, Wayne Dyer says, which Lao Tzu calls bland and insipid with the ecstasy of the Tao. Just for a moment. So we're contrasting this bleak picture of pleasure, which is being you know, created here and described here, contrasting that with what is described as the Tao, remember being universal, being, uh, you know, when you look for it, nothing to see, when you use it, cannot be exhausted. So it's always there, but it's fascinating. Contrast this with the ecstasy of the Tao. Just for a moment, imagine having the perspective of the Tao as you read this verse. And see if you can change the way you look at this idea of pleasure, the benefits of having a concept that harmonizes with the Tao are outlined in the opening lines. All people will flock to you and they'll find peace, security, and happiness when they do. I wondered who the you was that it was describing there. Interesting. The reason, Wayne Dyer continues, why they'll discover these three jewels is because you, quote unquote, exude such qualities. Your emphasis is on the Tao. It's who you are and therefore what you have to give away. And that's another great lesson that he always taught is you can't give away something that you don't have. Because, you know, if you don't have love or joy or happiness inside of you, it's impossible to give that away to somebody else. So you can't give away what you don't have. This applies to both physical things and non-physical things, all the way from money to love. And as it's describing here, talking about the Tao, if you live, you know, with what we've learned through all 34 verses and halfway through the 35th now, if you live with your emphasis on these characteristics and qualities of the Tao, and it's who you are, and then therefore it becomes what you have to give away for just the way that you express yourself in life, hopefully. You are now changing the way you look at things, Wayne Dyer says, and that's the most important teaching here I'll add in is when you change your thoughts, you change your life. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And it's very fascinating on how you can be exactly where you were, you know, looking at the same things, except you're experiencing all of it in an entirely new way. So Wayne Dyer continues here, you are changing the way you look at things. So your idea of pleasure shifts beyond the worldly nudges of your senses. You taste your food, but instead of just tasting it like we all normally do, you're, you're in awe of the magic that produced the delectables you're eating, as well as the perfection of this incredible cycle that continues in the elimination process and reuse of what you've consumed. The constant behind this ever-changing world becomes your new source of pleasure. The so that constant that he's describing there is the Tao, is the source, is the force, the great universal intelligence, God, whatever it is you describe it as. And so this constant behind everything else that's always changing in the world that we put labels on, which becomes the world of the 10,000 things, which is how Lao Tzu describes it, you, you start to realize that there is something behind this ever-changing world and this constant becomes your new source of pleasure, expressed in the wonder and bewilderment you feel. And I'll add, in trying to understand its nature, like even watching trees blow in the wind, it's interesting when you think about this constant behind the ever-changing things that are going on all the time. Yes, of course, Wayne Dyer says, you continue to enjoy your meals, so don't take this the wrong way. And just <laughs> but your pleasure is in being at one 
with what it is that allows it all to transpire. So it's a greater perspective, you could say. Wayne Dyer continues, you know that you can't find, hear, see, or touch the source, yet it's always available and can never be depleted. The music that you hear isn't Tao. The Tao is the invisible energy that fills the empty spaces and give you so much joy. And that happiness you feel is the eternally available and longed for pleasure of transcending the physical limitations of a human body. Touching the Tao is way beyond any of the sensory pleasures that we somehow believe will satisfy that longing for transcendence. Addictions become impossible because you no longer try to get worldly pursuits to satisfy you. So once you change, once you change the um, type of pleasure that you're seeking after for more of this, you know, universal transcendent pleasure that comes from the constant behind all the things in the world, it's like the less you will continue to seek after worldly things to satisfy you, the less that becomes your main pursuit. It's like realizing that you can fly when you've been walking faster and faster, but never getting enough speed or altitude. <laughs> you kept trying to satisfy a natural longing to be aloft through the pleasure of rapid walking. Now, you're, now you observe the way nature flows. You clearly see it never asking for more. Interesting. Never using up more and absolutely never demanding that it be provided with more than is necessary to maintain a perfect balance. The realm of passing pleasures is no longer your central place of self-identification. And that, you know, some people do really self-identify with all the things that it is that they so often do in order to give them pleasure. Wayne Dyer continues, when you, when you, the realm of passing pleasures, when you go beyond this, when these worldly things that we sometimes self-identify with that give us pleasure, when we go beyond this, he says, we are at peace, feeling secure and happy because you've changed your worldview to include the infinite Tao, the source. How could these worldly things ever compare, Wayne Dyer says. He used the word addictions there, but I think this goes beyond addictions to all, you know, physical worldly pursuits of pleasure. Imagine, Wayne Dyer says, a heroin addict believing that peace, security, and happiness are available within an inexhaustible supply of opiates. That scenario is impossible because the pleasure that drug brings lasts but a few seconds and then the opposite of peace security happiness comfort health and any of the great things that we're you know trying to get to in life trying to create for ourselves and bring into our moment-to-moment -moment existence it's like none of that becomes possible the second that supply of what you thought you needed to be happy disappears to be comfortable disappears and so the opposite of those things immediately click in. The addict keeps trying to fly by running faster and faster, referring to the metaphor we used just a moment ago. Ultimately, he comes to despise his life and destroy himself in the process. That's a powerful, it's a powerful sentiment after what was just said. It's like believing that peace and security and happiness are available within this supply of things that we continue to gather ourselves here in the worldly, you know, physical domain. But when it goes away, then the opposite of peace and security and happiness and health and all those things clicks in. And then we begin to not only despise ourselves, but the rest of the world around us, our lives. And then we begin to destroy ourselves in this cyclical process. So that's, I think, what he was saying there before when he was saying you can't get enough of what you don't need. You'll never get enough of what you don't want. It becomes your jailer. 
even though it's what gives you the worldly comfort. And so if we can switch this perspective to finding, see, I had no idea he was going to go this direction with this chapter. That's why I kind of tried not to elaborate on the title, but if we can switch from these, you know, physical worldly pleasures to having to not stopping enjoying them. See, that would be another mistake. You continue to enjoy the worldly pleasures, but you see it in a new perspective of where it is a universal source or the Tao that's being described here. That is, you know, the magic that connects it all. That's kind of one of the things that you come to describe in your own way, in your own mind when you research and try to understand this kind of philosophy and wisdom of the Tao. So I'll go back to where we were there. The attic keeps trying to fly and fly by running faster. And so in this process, in this metaphorical process, comes to despise his life and destroy himself. Such is the destiny of those who seek the pleasures of the world of the senses to fulfill their longing and natural ability to transcend the physical plane. Here's what Lao Tzu is offering you in this profound verse of the Tao Te Ching. Number one, notice the eternal bliss that's always with you. Even when the delectables <laughs> or the goodies or whatever it is that makes you feel so good, even when those things are out of reach or out of sight. And so Wayne Dyer elaborates on that suggestion by saying, change your way of thinking of yourself as a totally physical being. Mm. That's one of the most maybe profound suggestions to try to get to this new perspective of, you know, this new understanding of pleasure rather than it coming from all these worldly things. It's like, if you begin to see yourself as more than just a physical being, if you are not just your body and you are a spiritual being having a human experience rather than a human being having a spiritual experience, it's one of the good quotes that I like, but it's like changing, once again, changing your thoughts and changing your life. When, you, when we can change our perspective to this higher perspective, so instead of us just being here as, you know, temporary physical beings, it's like maybe we are here as temporary physical beings, but at the same time, we're also a part of the great source, you know, the, a part of the Tao, the great, a part of God, whatever it is you want to call it. Or a lot of people, you know, think about it like, we're here in this lifetime, but there's many lifetimes to go before and after this one. And so who we really are is beyond just this persona in this moment. And so I'll go back to what Wayne Dyer was saying. Change your way of thinking of yourself as a totally physical being. Instead, recognize that worldly pleasures tend to be overdone, that worldly pleasures that tend to be overdone are attempts to transcend the physical. Mm, interesting. So we're attempting to transcend the physical, even though some of us might not even accept that that could be a possibility. Hmm. Which isn't going to happen, Wayne Dyer says, without tapping into your natural connection to the Tao. And that was one of the things I kept saying, you know, in previous verses is it seems to be the Tao is most easily described by either nature or harmony. It's like when you look at nature or when you look at the characteristics and qualities of harmony, stop equating, Wayne Dyer says, so sensory delight with the Tao inspired bliss that's available to you. So he's saying, like, recognize that these worldly pleasures. Are, that we're overdoing all the time are actually attempts to transcend the physical, which isn't going to happen without us tapping into our natural connection to the Tao. And so enjoy all that you experience through the senses. Once again, don't take this the wrong way. 
Enjoy all that we experience through the senses. Love your fine dining and bask in the melodies of your favorite music and be appreciative of the excitement of sexual energy. But notice that this is all coming from your sensory self, which is happily adaptable to this world. Then seek your, what some will call your higher self. Wayne Dyer describes it here as your Tao self, which transcends the physical and explore its pleasures. That's a fascinating one. I was, it, you know, it's almost something that would take a practice of meditation or, you know, personal alone time or uh, spending time in nature or these kind of things to try to tap into that other part of yourself that's beyond just the sensory self that is being described here. Wayne Dyer continues, re-examine what true lasting enjoyment is. And that was the first line of this chapter, which was so powerful, or the first little paragraph there. So take a few minutes to really think to yourself, and this is part of that practice of coming to know thyself, really think to yourself about what do you like? I mean, that's not exactly what it said. What it said here is, when I think of pleasures, what activities readily come to mind? How do I distinguish between what I find enjoyable and what I don't. So what separates what I like and what I don't like and what do I want? See, that was the, it's one of the first steps of knowing thyself and then getting your mind on track to, you know, creating things for yourself in your life, becoming a manifester, because you can't really create anything for yourself if you don't even know what you really want. And if you haven't ever thought about it, most people, if you ask them, you know, they'll come up with really simple answers that are short term, but it's hard to, I think, I'm not sure really, but I would guess that it's hard to find a lot of people that are really deeply thinking about, you know, themselves and what they want to create for themselves. And I, I doubt that's a normal thing that a lot of people spend a lot of time meditating and pondering on. Usually we're too distracted by all of the different forms of entertainment pleasure and enjoyment that there are in the physical world, which is exactly what's being described here in this chapter around the 35th verse of the Tao Te Ching. And I hope you're getting value. If you are, consider subscribing and smash the like button. Leave me a comment. And let me know what you think. And we'll continue here. So re-examine what true lasting enjoyment is for you, because it's different for each and every one of us. And so even though the effects of the Tao may initially have no appeal to your physical, you know, your sensory being, your seeing, your hearing, your touching, your tasting, and smelling faculties, but they'll fulfill the longing you're trying to state with these worldly pursuits. When you're chasing any passing fancy, begin recognizing its value in the here and now but stop trying to get it to satisfy a greater longing. So I extended that recommendation, but that was what Wayne Dyer was giving to us in a way that we can try to apply this into our life by saying, notice the eternal bliss that's always with you, even when these worldly pleasures are out of reach or out of sight. Number two here out of the recommendations that Dr. Dyer gives us is introduce transcendent thankfulness to your everyday life. And this is a theme that crops up in almost every one of these videos and every one of the videos in the wisdom of the ages that we do on Wednesdays, which we'll be doing tomorrow. And it's like this, this ability to switch to gratitude or thankfulness or being grateful for you know, whatever it is that we do have, regardless of whatever's going on. And it it's really is a practice and a challenge. It's like, makes me think about working out, you know, like people wanna go get big muscles, but after the second week, they're like, this just isn't working. And it's, it's one of those things that takes a long time of continued repetitive, you know, daily, it's practice and it takes effort and diligence and it becomes a lifestyle in order to create these kind of things in your life. So introduce this transcendent thankfulness to your everyday life. 
Make it a daily practice, Wayne Dyer begins, by saying to give thanks for the presence of the eternal source or Tao that's always with you. From an appreciative viewpoint, the world that you formerly desired will begin to look different. Mm. That is a powerful sentiment. I've never thought about it that way. From a, from a viewpoint of thankfulness and gratitude, this is why he always recommends this as one of the key points to the manifesting process is having this thankfulness is it's like what you formerly desired will begin to look different from this new perspective. In the grateful Tao awareness, as he describes it, feelings of being incomplete when worldly pleasures are unavailable begin to be replaced with a transcendent thankfulness. What used to be a need for a worldly delight is replaced with gratitude and contentment for being aware of the aspect of you that is the Tao or that is connected to the universal source, universal intelligence, great spirit, whatever it is that you call it, ladies and gentlemen. You will begin to, that was great. That was a great line. It's like what used to be a need for a worldly delight is replaced with the gratitude and contentment for being aware. So this is a new awareness, a new understanding because we're changing our thoughts, changing our life. A new perspective is another great way to put it. You become aware of this aspect of you. See, so this, your higher self or your Tao self, as Wayne Dyer refers to it here, this new aspect of you, that's not just the sensory self that is connected to the source, which is free of physical and earthly limitations and confinement. Living with conscious appreciation of this source, of this Tao, will attract more people and experiences enriching your balance of mortal and eternal awareness. Open yourself to the unlimited love and abundance of the Tao, and you'll attract more of that same love and abundance to you. That's an important line when it comes to the keys of manifesting, ladies and gentlemen. Open yourself to love and abundance and you know happiness, prosperity, health, whatever it is that you're seeking after. Because so often, if you don't have enough money, all you're open to is, I just don't have enough money. This is no good right now. Or you know whatever it may be, if you're not feeling well, if you're ill in a way, sometimes all that we can open ourselves to is I'm not feeling well, I'm you know, not getting better. This is not, and it's, it's a secret to manifesting. As far as I've learned, that when you open yourself to what it is that you want to create and really truly have a knowing and, a, a, you know, no, no doubt, there is no room for doubt in the creation process. And so you have this certainty, this knowing, and you open yourself to the, you know, financial abundance, the abundance of health or whatever it is you're looking for in your life, the unlimited love and abundance of the source and you'll attract more of those same things that you've opened yourself to, to you. Your world has changed, Wayne Dyer finishes here by saying, because you see the Tao where you previously only noticed your mortal self, your sensory self needing worldly pleasures. And finally, Wayne Dyer finishes each of these chapters with a Wonderful recommendation, also similar to the last two, but maybe even more succinct, in a way that we can apply these, you know, more higher up in the clouds kind of ideas practically to our daily lives. And he gives this to us in a simple, short little paragraph titled, Do the Tao Now. And so this is why you should get this book for yourself and put it on your bookshelf, because if you don't have a bookshelf, everybody needs a bookshelf. So I have this link below in the description. You can expand it there and get a copy of this because it's definitely somebody needs for reference in the background. I know I do. So do the Tao now. He says, go on a 24-hour fast. Whew. That's a challenge. <laughs> 
I'm pretty sure that's a challenge for everybody watching this video. If you've already done a 24 hour fast in your life, <laughs> leave a comment and let me know about that because that's definitely a challenge. I think I might have done it on accident. You know, sometimes when you only eat lunch and then you don't really eat anything and you go all night sleep and then next day, you finally eat again. It's been close to 24 hours. So maybe an accidental fast like that, but let's continue here. He says, go on a 24 hour fast. When you feel hunger, switch your thoughts to gratitude for the eternal force that's always with you. Wow. <laughs> that's an ultimate challenge and an ultimate way to come to recognize the ability that gratitude has if you can use it without letting your, um, you know, your sensory self or your ego mind get back in control of the reins. And so switch your thoughts to gratitude for this force that's always with you warmly. Let your physical self know that it will be fed when the fast is over and you will be fine. Then switch to the Tao self, the source self, your higher self that's unaware of hunger. Enjoy the different nature of the Tao self by concentrating on locating its energy flowing through your body. It will reveal itself perhaps as contented, exhilarated, or blissful. Note the difference between how this feels compared with the worldly pleasures that we're so often seeking after. Boom. Boom to knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. That was a good one. And like I said a couple times, I did not expect it to go that direction. I mean, somewhat, but it really, he really finds a way to elaborate on some of these ideas and take it to a more philosophical, spiritual, mystical perspective. Becoming the sage is something that's so often referred to in these verses of the Tao. And that's exactly what we're attempting to do. But like it says on the front of the wisdom of the ages, 60 days to enlightenment, I don't think anybody can get to enlightenment in 60 days. I don't even know if 60 years. I mean, I know there's great characters like the Buddha and all these other wonderful teachers throughout the ages. But, you know, it was described that they reached enlightenment at a short time in their lives. But. I almost believe that it is something that, because even in those teachings, it is described that it took many lifetimes to get to the lifetime they were at, to be at the point, to be ready, to fully transcend their perspectives while they're here in this physical realm to that beyond, transcending the physical realm, going beyond. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before I ramble on anymore, I'll leave it right there. That was a fantastic fantastic verse of the Tao Te Ching and it really makes you think that one went that one went pretty deep there with describing our connection with source or Tao and our ability to transcend the things of the physical world and looking at pleasure see that was another interesting thing not getting rid of pleasure because you could take it that way and you know that would be the wrong way to take it it's like enjoying the pleasures of life but with a much greater perspective. And so continue, ladies and gentlemen, to seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment, seek to discover the hidden wisdom of the ages and going perfectly with the lesson today, continue to make happiness the way, the process, the activity that you bring to life because the things that we've so long been striving for that we say, you know, I'll be happy when, I get this, or when I get that, or when we get there, those things begin to become irrelevant because we've already got what it is that we're searching for when we can begin to make happiness the way. So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate everybody who takes time out of their day to spend with me here and Dr. Wayne Dyer and Lao Tzu and all the wonderful authors and poets in the wisdom of the ages. I'll be back tomorrow with wisdom of the ages. And so be sure to smash the like button. If you got value, consider subscribing, expand the description below, get yourself a copy of this book. And I've also got my landscape paintings linked down there. And once again, thank you so much. I love and appreciate everybody.